<clears throat> hey folks, how are you doing? Um, this video is going to cover uh, maintenance. Uh, I'll do a, a series of videos on uh, maintenance. There's not really a lot that the welder can do uh, in most cases. Um, liner replacement is one. Um, <clears throat> replacing the stinger tongs on uh, your, your lead is another. Um, for the most part, maintenance issues that occur for welders are best limited to the experts. Uh, but there are certain things that you should know how to do. And this is beyond just troubleshooting. Okay, so troubleshooting would be saying, well, these stick tongs really aren't working all that well. Um, I'm going to try to get a view here for the camera. Um, these tongs are pretty well chewed up. Um, the grooves have been uh, destroyed, the spatter balls in them. Uh, they still work, but they don't work all that well. The brand new tongs will very easily hold your stick electrode uh, either you know, straight uh, 90 degrees or 45 degrees up and down. And these just don't. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace these today. Uh, the other thing uh, that I wanna note on this is that the uh, process generally involves having to cut the cable. Uh, you might only cut an inch off, but sometimes the cable needs to be trimmed. Um, a set of uh, wire cutters like these, these are long handle, they get a little more leverage. These are traditional. Um, eight inch cutters. They work okay uh, for the small leads. This is uh, number four uh, wire on these, uh, these stick tongs. So they're not terribly heavy and they're not terribly difficult to cut. Uh, but if you're doing repairs of uh, cam locks or lug connectors that are on number one, number two uh, cable, or excuse me, two watt, one watt or two watt cable or larger, um, you generally need a set of high leverage cable cutters or a set of uh, bolt cutters will actually work in a pinch, uh, provided that the bolt cutters haven't been damaged. Um, but for today, I recognize that if I trim these uh, and I use these small cutters, um, this is not going to work on larger diameter cables, uh, but it should work just fine right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera down to get a close up view of this. And we're going to go ahead and get started. <clears throat> All right, um, the first thing that we're going to do in terms of uh, replacing the tongs, which hopefully goes without saying, is we're going to unplug from the power supply. If you have a setup that is uh, permanently hardwired, hard which is the case on some machines, uh, kill the power and preferably unplug the machine. Uh, you don't want to get electrocuted. But the basic uh, setup of this is pretty simple. Uh, I prefer to use a vise, although it's not necessary. Um, I have a brand new uh, set of tongs here. These are the Matheson 200 amp electrode holders. Um, these are a decent set of tongs. There's, you know, others out there that are higher amperage rated, uh, probably higher quality, and there's some certainly that are of lower quality. But the the beauty is, is that if you can hook these up, you can hook any of them up because they're pretty much all the same. Um, as I pull the package open, <clears throat> what I discover is that uh, inside I generally will find all of the tools necessary. Uh, to do the job, which in this case is going to be a uh, five millimeter Allen screw. So let me slice this open. Again, uh, and we'll take a look. <clears throat> so there's the Allen screw. Uh, in this case here, this is in fact uh, five millimeter. So double check your uh, sizes carefully. Uh, you may find that uh, you know you get a set of tongs and there's no Allen wrench in it and in fact the uh, 
Allen wrench set that you have at home will damage the screws, so make sure they fit correctly. But essentially, uh, and I'll demonstrate this on this, uh, the Allen screw will go in the back. Usually there's some means of uh, holding uh, this on. Let me tip this up. This is actually the cable sheath. I'm gonna set that off to the side, okay? Um, the Allen screw is generally what holds this on. Um, it's, it's a screw of some sort. Essentially, I back that screw off and this comes out. So uh, really all that happens is when I tighten this up is that screw, figures, um, that screw simply pushes up on the inside and when that pushes up, it, 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 it binds up on the handle. Um, and, and that's really all there is, folks, to hold this on. So the gravity still works in here, I'm happy to say. Um, so we want to make sure that uh, that screw is, is tightened down to the point where it, it holds the tongs on. Um, I've seen people over tighten it and it'll actually punch through the plastic here. And uh, you can actually hang this on your booth. Uh, you may have a, a guard or something on your booth you can hang this on and it will arc out right there. So that does not need to be ridiculously tight when you remove it. So I'm going to back this out like I had it before. <clears throat> now, additionally in the tongs, we have another screw. Uh, this screw here should have a radius on the end of it. Okay. Uh, we can see this right here in the camera, hopefully. Get a good clear view of that. Hopefully it'll focus. Uh, that's got a ball end. Uh, that will bite into the copper cable. So again, I'm gonna screw this back in uh, just enough to get it started. And you should have some sort of a copper sleeve. That sleeve goes around the cable to hold the cable together. And uh, this will actually bite into it and it will compress the cable. And uh, this will keep the strands on the welding cable, which are very, very fine from separating. So there's not a lot to this. Um, don't lose this part. And again, I'm gonna set this off to the side. Additionally, even though this is brand new uh, and should be in good condition, and I'll compare this to the earlier clip. Uh, let me bring this up to the camera. Um, we'll get good lighting here. Again, these uh, grooves are nice and uh, sharp. Uh, they're really gonna hold the electrode very, very well. Uh, the top side is uh, generally flat in this case. Some of them have just a metal uh, laminated sheet in there, but uh, again, that's what they should look like. This should be pretty difficult to open, honestly. That should be fairly stout. And uh, don't assume that because this just came out of the box that all these are tight. Give them a quick check, okay, to make sure the insulators are tight. Also, make sure none of the insulators are broken. Um, this could have, you know, uh, fallen on the floor, you know, brand new, only dropped once sort of thing. Uh, so as long as this is in good serviceable condition, we're ready to uh, set this aside and begin replacing the tongs. So I've got this held in the vise uh, just to help, uh, you know, again, a, a third hand, if you will. I'm going to back this out and I'm going to slide the handle down over the cable to get it out of the way. At that stage of the game, uh, there may be parts on this that are usable. Um, you know, certainly the insulators are, are usable. You may find your brand new tongs, you drop it, you know, five minutes after hooking it up and you break it. So it's worth uh, holding on to this, at least stripping off the parts that are good, screws, insulators, uh, maybe some of these retaining screws in case you, you know, drop one down the road, uh, keep them in a jar. Um, but for now, again, I'm just going to uh, take these apart. So I'm going to put the cap screw in. Um, I tighten the heck out of these things. Um, so I'm not sure who put this one on, but I would expect that these could be quite tight. Uh, I think that it's definitely uh, worthwhile to make sure that these connections are, in fact, tight. This one's not that bad. So again, I'm going to back this out and I'll, I'll pull this out. Now I can see here <clears throat> that this was replaced uh, without the copper sleeve. And that's a good thing actually. Uh, it's, it kind of demonstrates everything that can happen. 
But uh, essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, cut this off. We're gonna strip this back uh, as if this was badly damaged or maybe it's a brand new piece of cable. So I'm gonna set this aside. The old tongs, again, I don't necessarily need, but you know, again, spare parts. I've opened packages and dropped that screw on the floor and gone out. So having a jar with some spare parts is not necessarily a bad thing. Now the cable itself, again, uh, this is a small cable, so I'm not uh, gonna have too much difficulty cutting it with common cutters, but I, I will have to snip away at it. Uh, it's not gonna be something I'm just gonna be able to just uh, plow through. Uh, even if the cutters were brand new, um, this would be difficult. Uh, these cutters are not designed to cut, you know, uh, number four cable. Um, so I'm going to snip through this. And as I mentioned before, a proper set of high leverage cable cutters um, is definitely something uh, that's in order. Right now I don't have full access to my entire shop because this is being filmed uh, during the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic time. So I've, I've got what I've got when I don't have access to my stock room. Um, the larger uh, you know, leverage cables may work, but in this case, again, I, I made it clear. <clears throat> the next step, if you haven't already done so, is to remove the handle. Uh, while this can be uh, reused, and again, you may want to hold on to it for a spare part, uh, I'm going to put the brand new parts on. So, <clears throat> Probably the single biggest mistake that I make is hooking the tongs on and forgetting <laughs> to put the handle back on. So I'm gonna do that right now. Again, I've just simply taken the old one off, uh, could have reused it, but I'm gonna slide the new handle on, make sure it's orientated the correct way, um, and we'll get that on site. The cable then needs to be stripped back. The length of this uh, collar will give you an idea as to how much needs to be removed. It's not a lot. So I'm gonna use a common uh, pocket knife. Uh, again, roll the knife around the outside. Don't carve this off like you're whittling an alder, okay, like this. Uh, you'll damage the cable and your knife. Um, by making a light cut, I can then twist this. It will break the uh, bottom of the rubber you don't have to go all the way through and then we're simply going to pull this off okay now i don't want to fray the cable out any more than necessary um, in fact i use the old cable as an example but you can see that these are made of very very fine wires uh, that's what makes them flexible so we want to avoid breaking those uh, this has a flared end um, they don't always, but the flared end will definitely help it to slip over a little bit easier. And again, ensuring that I've already put the handle on, I'm simply going to insert this into uh, the tongs. And I may have to back this screw out a little bit. But I'm going to insert this into the tongs and make sure that it seats fully all the way. Uh, right now, it's not going in as far as I want it to. Um, the collar has slipped back a little bit. So again, I just want to make sure that that's in all the way. And now I have minimal uh, cable sticking out. The handle, and I'll use the old one just as an example, extends quite a ways over. So even if you have some bare cable here, it's not going to be uh, an electrocution issue. So again, we're going to reinsert this. Again, it should have a ball on the end of it so it doesn't damage the cable. Don't go to the hardware store and grab a cupped end one uh, as a replacement. You will damage the cable. And then I'm going to tighten this up. <clears throat> this is compressing the cable. Uh, the tighter this connection is, the less uh, likely you are to have it come loose. Um, the greater the ability you are going to have for the electricity to uh, flow through. So again, I'm going to tighten this up. Now I don't want to I don't want to break the handle off, but I'm going to grab this in the vise. I always do this this way. This is just my preference. Probably other people on the internet will say, "Oh, that Mr. Carter is an idiot. Don't do that." But this is what I do, and I'm going to gain a little bit of leverage. Um, 
if I need to, to tighten this up. So if you feel that you, you know, can't get this uh, sufficiently tight, um, then put a little pipe on this or grab it. Um, you know, I'm six feet tall and I weigh almost 300 pounds, so I'm fairly strong, but uh, I want to make sure that that is definitely not ever going to come loose. Whoops. And right there, okay. I always tell my students, you know, it's it's almost impossible to over tighten it, um, especially with the supplied Allen wrench. Uh, so don't hesitate to uh, give that a twist. And these Allen wrenches, you can see this one's actually twisted. Um, they're not the highest quality <laughs> tools in the world uh, that come with these. So again, you, you will not be able to over tighten the nut. You'll you'll damage the wrench before you over tighten the nut. All right, last step, folks, is to, uh, again, just give it a good once over, uh, give it a tug, make sure it's actually in there tight, and then we're gonna slide the handle on. The hole has to line up with the screw. And again, inserting the Allen wrench uh, in through, we're gonna tighten this up, make sure it's all the way forward until it's snug. Uh, this will stretch the plastic, pop a hole through here. So again, this doesn't need to be uh, ridiculously tight, but just make sure it's snug and the tongs are secure. And that's it. That's the process of replacing the stinger end, which is a pretty common maintenance procedure, right? Happy welding.